Welcome, I'm Alan Koch, um, and I wanted to give you a brief overview of what the class is about. Um, I think the best way to do this is through a, a small experiment that encompasses the, what, what you'll be learning throughout the semester. Okay? So, I want to start by considering Fruit Loops. Okay? And I might be interested in wondering what proportion of Fruit Loops are orange, color not flavor. So, what proportion of Fruit Loops are orange? Okay, now this is a big box. I bought the family size. We have a very good cereal budget in our department, uh, and so I don't have the time to count all of the Fruit Loops in here and see how many are orange. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is obtain a sample. Okay. So what I have here is called a sample. It's just a representative, hopefully, uh, collection from the population, the population being all Fruit Loops. Okay? And so what I can do is go through and count the number of orange and the total number. And this is the exciting part of the video. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we have 45 Fruit Loops here, after that awkward silence, of which eight are orange, okay? So it's easy to see that, that we have eight out of 45, and that's a perfectly reasonable answer, but we can convert it to a percentage uh, as well. So it's roughly point, roughly point 0.18 or 18% orange, okay? That, that's easy, that's, that's what we call data analysis. We collect a sample, and then we analyze the data. And we can do pie charts and all that other great stuff as well. But it doesn't answer my question. My question was, what proportion in the box? Okay? And so we had this question of, is this representative? Okay? And of course, the, the scary thing is you'll never really know. Okay? Uh, there are a couple of reasons why the bowl that I happen to pour here is not a representative sample. Okay? One reason is maybe there is, um, a problem with the way I collected the data. Okay? So for example, you might have noticed, you, the careful viewer might have noticed this was open ahead of time. So it could have been tampered with. Uh, it wasn't. The reason it was open ahead of time is because I've had bad experience opening the cellophane uh, in the middle of class and you know, sample everywhere. Um, but the other thing is that maybe when you, the Fruit Loops, when they come, maybe you've got a layer of orange, a layer of purple, green, and let's call that blue, okay? And so maybe they're just not mixed very well to begin with. I've never been to the, the Kellogg's factory, and I've never seen how they put these boxes together, okay? So there could be a problem with the way I collected the data, okay? Or it could just simply be due to chance, okay? I took a bowl, I poured, I got my 45 little friends here, and maybe just through sheer chance, I got a disproportionate number to be orange or not to be orange, okay? And the unsettling thing is that you'd never know. You would have no way of knowing if this is just an unusual bowl of Fruit Loops. Okay? And so what we do in statistics, and there's a lot of work behind this, uh, we're not comfortable saying 18% of the Fruit Loops in that box are orange. Okay? Uh, just not because of the uncertainty, the randomness, uh, I just don't think that that's, uh, I'm not comfortable saying that. Okay? But what I might be comfortable saying is that it might be 18% plus or minus some number, okay? And so I might say 18% plus or minus 8% orange, okay? So while I would be uncomfortable saying, oh sure, 18% orange, I might be comfortable saying that we would have a range between 10% and 26%. Now that's an awfully big range because there's only 100 percentage points, but you know, that's not a lot of sample. Right? So the question is, you know, how do you, where does this number come from? Is this just something I made up off the top of my head, or is there some good statistics that tell us how to compute this number? And that's one of the things that we're going to uh, work towards as we go through the summer. Um, this, the idea of um, taking what you get with data analysis and creating this um, statement about the, the whole world around you is called statistical inference. And that's uh, what we're going to spend a lot of time talking about, where these formulas come from. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, I really don't care what proportion of Fruit Loops are orange, 
for some reason. Uh, but of course, hopefully you can see the power in being able to do this, right? So instead of having a box of Fruit Loops, you could have uh, four different people in a presidential primary, and you want to do a poll, right? And you know, if everybody in your state is, you know, the state of Fruit Loopia, um, if there's just too many people in there to count, you take a sample. You take a poll of 100 people, or in this case, 45 people, right? And so you could have a poll of 45 people, of which 18 you know, of the 45, eight of them prefer. Uh, Mr. Orange or Mrs. Orange, okay? Um, and so what can we conclude about the world around this? And you see this all of the time. Uh, you see that, uh, you know, you, you see the opinion polls and then always in the fine print there's this margin of error plus or minus five percentage points. Um, that's what this is and we'll talk about where that number comes from as well. And I have no idea how to end this. So we'll just end this now and, and I hope to see you in class. <laughs>